This week marked the 36th anniversary of Nirvana's first ever studio session. On January 23rd, 1988, Kurt, Christ, and Dale Crover from the Melvins went to Reciprocal Recording in Seattle and recorded with Jack and Dino. Kurt and Christ didn't have a permanent drummer at the time, and Dale was there to help his friends out while they were in a pinch. In this video, I'll be attempting to recreate Kurt Cobain's guitar tone from Nirvana's first recording session. In this lightning fast session, they recorded and mixed 10 songs in 6 hours. The resulting tape that the band left with became known as the Dale Demo. According to Endino, they would have recorded two more songs, but they weren't able to due to lack of time. The band had a show in Tacoma that same night at the Community World Theater. After they completed their first recording session, they sped off to the show and played the same songs they had just recorded in the same order. Endino was so impressed with what he heard that he ended up making his own mix of the session for himself. He passed out copies of those mixes to his friends, one of them being Jonathan Poneman, who had just founded Sub Pop two years prior with Bruce Pavitt. Jonathan being given this tape eventually led to Nirvana signing a record deal with Sub Pop. Three of these songs were put on Bleach, and five of these songs ended up being released on Incesticide. Two of them were later released on the With The Lights Out box set, and at the time of recording this video, the only song from this session that hasn't had an official release is Spang Through. My favorite era of Nirvana will forever be the In Utero Tour. In my opinion, that was when they were at the peak of their powers. But if I had to narrow it down to just studio recording sessions, the Dale demo would be my favorite. This is an unhinged and chaotic side of the band that we don't really hear again. Also, Dale is my favorite drummer, and I'll always wish that his time in Nirvana was longer. The next studio session after this one is the Love Buzz single session, where the band now has a more retro 70s sound that they ended up having on Bleach. That is how Kurt Cobain himself described it in this interview that took place after Live and Loud. He says there that there should have been an album before Bleach, with re-recorded Fecal Matter songs and with the Dale Demo Incesticide songs. He explains, That was a period of our band. That was our progression. We were really into experimental, noisy. Most of the stuff on Incesticide should have come out before Bleach, really. It would have been a lot more like Incesticide. But we just happened to write so many songs that we just put it on Bleach. They just happened to be in the more 70s vein. Let's now break down Kurt's setup from this session. And then I'll be showing what I am using and my settings. Everything we discuss in regards to Kurt's setup also applies to the show they played that night in Tacoma, as they went from this session straight to the show. Kurt most likely used this Univox Phase 3 High Flyer for the entire session. That's the guitar he was using heavily in this time period and what he played at the show that night. I will be using my Eastwood High Flyer Phase 4, which is actually a replica of the High Flyer Kurt used in the Heart Shape Box music video. For pedals, Kurt used a Boss DS1 for distortion and a Boss DM2 on If You Must. I will be using my 92 DS1 and my DM2W. These are my settings. I'm going to sidetrack for a quick second to address something quick about Kurt's DM2. In my recent pedal history video about it, I presented that he might have used it together with a wah in this way in Love Buzz. I right away had comments on that video pointing out that it's most likely that he actually achieved this sound by messing with the intensity knob, like this. I was not aware of this method at all when I made this video, and I always want to correct myself if there is something I missed in a previous video. I still stand by my original train of thought that it might have been used with the wah, but I do agree 
that the love buzz oscillation sound was most likely achieved by him messing with the intensity knob. Jack and Dino recalls Kurt using a Randall solid state amp on the Dale demo. He is most likely referring to Kurt's Randall RG120 head. I am using my 1970s Randall Commander 2 RG120 212. This is the combo amp version of that head. I am in love with this amp. I bought it locally on Facebook Marketplace and I'm so happy that I did. I do want to be transparent about a few things in regards to how I'm using it. I live in a townhome. I share walls with neighbors and I have a baby at home. This amp has a reputation of being very loud and I haven't been able to test that as I can't turn the master volume past one and a half. I have it mic'd with a Shure SM57 with its gain cranked basically as high as it can go. That's why you'll hear faint strumming sounds during the clean parts. It also doesn't help that I'm physically so close to the amp, but my music room where I record all my content is pretty small. It also has a persistent hum. It needs to be professionally recapped, but I haven't found a local tech yet to fix it. In my audio software Pro Tools, I am using a noise suppressor plugin that eliminates 90% of the hum without affecting the tonal quality of the output. It makes a world of difference, but it doesn't remove it completely which is why at the end of the songs, you'll hear a slight hum. You'll now hear me playing all the riffs from this demo. Settings will be shown in the corner of the screen with pedals being shown as they are being used. Let me know what you think. <laughs>